All right, everybody, welcome to Sketchcraft Art Tips. We're gonna get a little technical here. We're gonna talk some shop. We're gonna go over flats and how to set them up for your artist. This is gonna be pretty interesting. If you set up flats for yourself or if you're doing them for other people, let me sort of get into the nitty gritty details of kind of like the best ways to sort of think about uh, how to go about doing this because you find yourself in a position like I am today where I'm like, ah, shit, you know? So Brandon, you there? Yep. Brandon, you set up my flats now, right? Yep. And it's been fun last couple of days, right? <sighs> loads of fun. Yeah, loads of fun. So rather than just yell at Brandon and exhaust myself all fucking night, I just want to go over some very basic thoughts. That way, Brandon, in the future, you can use this video. This will be okay. amazing, right? It's a good tool for you too, right? Because I don't expect anyone to remember how to do stuff the first couple times to do it. Um, but I hate repeating myself. Like, there's nothing I hate more than that. Uh, I was... I have a very strict art upbringing where I was told once and that was it. So I don't expect people to learn that way, but that's how I was taught. So um, I make these videos. Now, Brandon, first thing I want to talk about here is when you're setting up flats, people are going to send you your line art or their line art. And what are flats? Flats are used for selection purposes. So let's say I want to go and color this guy here. This nifty little robot. I want to color him, right? Mm -hmm. I want to make them look kind of like this. I want to airbrush. I want to color this tiger. You need to be able to select the different parts of the image as you're coloring, right? Mm -hmm. Like his hand. I want to select his hand. I need to be able to select these different parts. Um, and you want those selections to be the same every time. You don't want to have to go in here while you're painting and constantly have to use a lasso tool. And you know, Imagine doing this 700 times every time you needed to do something. Plus, you want to make sure that you got the same selection every time for something. If the selection changes every time, then you're going to get cracks and weird, you know, uh, bleed over between them areas. You know, if you think you're on the hand, but you're also painting the wrist, and you, you basically you're doubling up efforts or repeating efforts. So setting up the flats. Now, the things the flats aren't in their base form, which is this form right here, they are not the base colors of all your characters. He's not going to have a blue head. He's not going to have purple teeth. This robot over here is not going to have a pink watch. These colors are used for selection purposes. And the reason why they're so different to the color that's next to them has to do with Photoshop makes selections not based on a color, but on a color's value, which is its, its form in black and white. So if I go over here and just quickly set this up in black, set to saturation, you can see this is how Photoshop sees these colors. So you got to make certain that when you're picking colors, see, these are kind of awfully close, but they're just a hair different. So you're within the... Uh, within the selection fill. But you got a bunch of character colors already set up that play well against one another, right, Brandon? Mm -hmm. Now, if I use these basic colors as is and just started doing digital painting with gradient maps, it's not going to work. See how the hands are different colors and shit like that? And these are different values. These are all different values. You then, once you get the flats, have to go and make the character the base colors that they are. Um, so he's going to be gold with this sort of brown trim and a black hat. Now this is where the fun comes in today. The fun comes in when Senor Rob here needs to, let's say I'm gonna go select that hat, Brandon, right? Mm -hmm. How would I select the hat right now? I, you I could use the one, you could go to the- But I have to see how, now watch this, check this out. I have to select this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 times. Every time. Or I have to then go into your flats, do that, and then build a flat for just the hat. So I want to just sort of think about here how to set things up so you, even Brandon, or anyone moving forward, knows how to sort of tear apart a character by piece. Let me show you. So... You start off with a base flat color for a character, which you did, right? Uh -huh. Each characters are separated by a base color. Pretty good, except here, that is incorrect. That should be solid. Also, folks, if I didn't stress this enough, when you're using your selection tools, like the lasso tool or the wand, make sure anti-alias is unchecked. See this? The reason why is, let me turn the lines up here. If it isn't, See how it's nice and crisp right there? That's because right now my selections any alias can just turn off. Let's go over here to and drop in oh, let me turn that off. 
Now you see how it has this little, now look at that, it's all pixelated around the edge. We'll zoom in, see how it's got a little bit of green, a little bit of red. We call this feathering. When anti-alias is turned on, you get that anti-aliased edge, which just means it's a feathered, smoother edge. We do not want this during the flats process, because watch what happens when I have to select the pink. It doesn't always select everything. We gotta go, let me merge that down. See here, it's selecting, it's not, if I select the green and the pink, in between it's forgetting all this other stuff. And you can't, you can't do that. You have to make certain any alias is checked off of everything while you are making selections in the flatting process. So that means checking it off in the lasso tool. That means checking it off on the wand. That means going here into your various wand selections. You have CC, right, Brandon? Correct. You have to go and make sure you hold down these little tabs and everything is unchecking any alias. And you got to make certain every time you um you restart Photoshop and you go to make selections that it didn't reset your settings. We want these nice crisp Atari like pixeled image edges. Perfectly crisp. Okay, so let's see here. You got your base character. Now you want to start tearing this down by shapes. Okay, and shapes are sometimes it helps to have a in this case there is some reference, like you can see this is a cover they already did. So you know he's got a hat. Right? Even if you didn't have color reference, you can look right. right over here and go, well, he's got a hat, right? Mm -hmm. Chances are Rob's going to want to select the whole hat at some point. So, you know, you got to break it down. Oh, shit. It's going to the magnetic lasso. Let me go over here to the lasso tool. Control D. I can go and just quickly all around here. I'll show you how this to, to trap the selection. Come in here and under the lines, select that. And... Now I want to make sure that it only fills in the areas that we've already... See, it's, I'm selecting outside the hat, right? When you're selecting things, as long as you have the wand tool selected, just right-click, and you can see you're going to get these selection tools. You can click Intersect. And what that's going to do is take your selection plus the thing that already exists on the layer and get the difference between the two. So now here we have the hat. We can fill that in. So the first thing I want to do is just go and add selections for every major piece. Uh, this little beard piece right here, this whole little beard piece right here would be one. Like if I just quickly, that would be one. This beard piece would be another. This would be, these would be three different things. Just this big goggle area and then the glass would be two separate. You got to think about like how would you color each piece. You know, you're going to want to be able to select. The reason why is if I want to airbrush underneath this nose, I need to be able to select underneath the nose, right? If in this case, like it's pretty good here, but see how this is blue, Brandon? Now I gotta come over here and make a one and a two selection to get that area. Now you go, that's not a big deal, I could fix it. But I'm just gonna let you know right now, it's a big deal when you're handing things off to people. So, like this key area is good to have a separate selection. Would be good to start with just the key and then add the little bits. I, I would say it'd be like, like this, Brandon. The file structure should go like, you have your base character here. You have all the basic shapes separated. So that means the big pieces, okay? Like uh, right in here. Like this would be a big piece, right? The watch would be another piece. See, I'm using the same color, so that's probably not the best thing to do for examples. The watch would be another piece. So like this would be a big, the big stuff. Uh, that would be a piece. This big area, just the big key. This thing, this thing would be separate. The big areas, once you got the big areas, then you noodle down to the little stuff on top of it. So you make a new thing, a new layer, and then you do the little noodling things like the stripe, right? These little blue squares, the stripe, the front and back of the hat. So if I need just the hat, boom, there's the hat, right? But now mm -hmm. I need to come in here and go, oh no, I need that little area. So you're right on that, but it's that in-between the big shape thing that is sort of missing because it's like, if I need to just grab this leg now, that's one, that's two, you know? And you go, well, that, that's not a big deal here. It, it starts to add up when you're like, I need to get this watch area, so now i got to click one, two, three every time I do it. And 
you know, here at Sketchcraft, we don't really operate on things called deadlines because I hate them. But in the real world, folks, things are always really fucking due. Uh, in this case, Monday. So I have to go through now and make those base selections myself before I start, which can eat up an hour, maybe two, if I'm, I'm fucking around with it, you know? So, uh, hmm. Brandon, do you have any questions about this? No. Are you just yeah. saying that because you think I'm picking on you or you're mad or something? <laughs> Being honest, man. No, I mean, I thought when I made the, let's just say for the TikTok character, when I made the giant green selection for behind him, I thought that was the base, the behind him. And no, therefore case I in thought... Point, case in point, like this little chain, probably be nice if that little chain was separated, right? Because I'd want to color the chain, right? Correct, but I guess I'm I'm still learning, following directions from our art director being you because when you we went over it the first time and you said like this whole base of his chest and the watchers and all that stuff was going to be no. All I'm being very clear now because I don't think you understand what, what what you were doing was going. You go for all the little details right away, right? That's what you tend mm -hmm. to do. Right. And I can't select any of the big shit, you know. So, right. like, you're coming in here, and you're spending four hours getting every little screw. I don't need every little screw in that case. Because right. I'm not going to... Okay, think about this. Okay, it's great for turning the screws gray or an off color. But I'm mm -hmm. not going to select this and want to deselect the screw when I'm airbrushing. You catch my drift? I need to be able to... Now, here's a chain. I need to airbrush underneath the chain, right? I need to be able to uh -huh. set a shade layer underneath the... Like, right here. If I come here and I set this to 50%, I need to be able to add some shade on it, right? You know what happens if I want to get in between this or separate the, the chain? I can't, you know, I can manually do it like I was painting, but mm -hmm. I can't select it. You know what I mean? I have to make that selection myself. You Just think about it. The way you got to think about it is in a layered, imagine, see the problem is Photoshop right now shows everything like this with the layers. They're like, try to imagine they're all actually like a stack on like a a cake, right? Um, I don't know, a trifle, whatever. Fucking, you know, it's like a cake, right? And each, you know, you, each layer, you need to be able to have the big pieces. And then towards the top, that's when you get all the little refinement pieces, you know? Right, I get it. Like, if I were to do his left arm, I would have done one solid shape for the left arm. And then the orange part of his hand, that would be another layer above it. And then the watch would be another. We don't need, you don't, not every little hand needs to be separated by layer, but separate it according to. Yeah, breaking it down by the big shape. So we got the full figure, and then we got, you know, this this hand, the full hand, including that little piece, the arm, right? Mm -hmm. This piece, or even this full arm piece, back like this, and the cables can be separate. So that'd be one, two, three, this piece here, this piece here, that piece there, right? This piece here as a whole piece. That, that, that. Like this, see, see like this is a good example. See these, these cables you got going on here are just one solid piece, right? Mm-hmm. And this orange is one solid. That would be on the same. That that would be, this section right here would be on that layer. Okay. Right. And then on top of that is when you would come in and say, oh, I'll get these little buttons for Rob. So you know what I mean? Like if Rob wants to color in the fucking buttons, you know what I mean? He doesn't have to make all those little selections himself. Okay. That's what I'm saying. You know, you you've just gone like the first time you did it, you went straight. So every little fucking thing was highlighted, but none of the big pieces were there. So okay. in order for me, I have to then make the big pieces by selecting 17 little things, you know, across the whole image. And folks, it ain't so bad for this robot, but when we got to like, when we did the Star Wars piece, come on, man, how many hours do I have to spend now doing that, right? Mm -hmm. So, like he has a pinstripe thing here, right? Um, on his vest. His vest is pinstriped. So, you know, and when you would kick it back to me the first time, i go, oh, if you didn't know they had the pinstripe, you would know. I get, you would know after you sent it to me the first time and I correct it, okay? So I'm not expecting you to be able to anticipate everything in advance. The more you work with the character, the more you know they're flats anyhow. So it's like the first time, right? But I'm trying to get you to think about less about tiny little specifics and more about the actual structure and why it's set up that way. It's not just because I'm like, do it this way, do it that way, do it that way. Because then what happens, Brandon, is, is you end up, not just you, but artists in general will end up reacting to the feedback they get back. And if you don't understand why those things need to be that way there, they need to be that way in the first place, 
when you go to create, you know, the flats or whatever piece of art you're doing, mm -hmm. you're just doing things either because I told you to or because that's what you heard. You don't actually know why, you know? So there's no benefit to you doing it. Um, or you're even your subconscious. Because you ever, you ever work on this shit, Brandon, and you lose track of time? All the time. And you don't know when you did something? Mm-hmm. It's because you're subconscious. It's the same part of your brain that's working when you drive home and you don't remember driving home. Like, you know mm -hmm. you drove home, but you don't. You were thinking about right. other shit. And you just, that's the part. And if that part doesn't know why you're supposed to do certain things, it's just going to default to whatever you would have done in the first place anyhow. You know? Like, you have to train your mind to know why this stuff is important because it's tedious. You know, the tediousness is something you're solving for me. So when I come in here, I can just go and make it really pretty and build up all the details on top of that, you know? Yeah. But to then have to go through and do it again on my part, yeah, I mean, I have a right to be irked about that. I'm not irked at you. It's I just got to make certain I'm explaining this in a way that you understand, you know, why it's set up this way. And then moving forward, how to think about tearing a character apart like this so because i mean i'll be honest you know when you get the piece you haven't drawn it like any other flatter you haven't drawn it half the time there's zero reference especially if it's a new book and so what you ended up with folks is you end up with this you end up with a piece of solid black and white art and you have to then look at it and go well what is that over there i don't know what that is i have never looked at this you know and that's why people when they start working together like you get a regular flatter. You get someone who gets used to seeing your art. And Brandon, seeing my art can be a little trick, right? Like, yeah, it can be a little like this. I don't consider this to be complicated, but the Star Wars shit is, you know. So, um, you want to be able to build up that that ability to see into their lines and not just a bunch of scraggly bullshit. So, um, but I'm being legitimate. If you have actual questions or why I'm doing something or whatever. Let me know right now, dude, because this no, is I, the place. I, under, I understand it now a little better. Like, let's just say the the tiger bear, for example. Right. I should have. Uh, well, I did first. I filled everything out in gray. Okay. Right. So then I went and did the orange nails. What I should have done was the orange nails on a separate layer on top of the gray, and then his head being the blue. I should have done that on another separate layer. Well, the blue, blue. It, it, well, that, that, yeah, but not on a separate layer from the, the toenails. You understand what I'm saying? Like, the whole head should be one little piece on a separate layer, right? Above that, then goes the teeth and gums and shit like that. Because mm -hmm. I need to be able to select the whole head at once. Right now, in order to select the whole head, his head, guess what I have to do? I have to select this, 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 right, this. Right, the blue, this, the this, pink, this, the teeth. See, that's what I'm saying. I get it. I understand. And that's the bigger part that I don't, you know, I, uh, I'm like, well, I think everyone should hear this, you know? So there's no confusion moving forward. Um, like his little tail could have been a piece just for selection purposes, you know, but not, it doesn't really have to be because look at this. I can just come here and do that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't stress about that kind of shit. I'm just stressed that, you know, I can airbrush these little, because in order to make these pieces pop out. This, this rivet from this rivet, you have to get underneath the seams, you know? It's like sculpting. To get underneath there, you want to put stuff in there, you want to edge stuff out. And those those selections are what flats are for. I think a lot of people think that they're just for the base color of the character. You know, that's what they think they're for. Like, no, that's what I then go and turn them the base colors of the character. But I'm not using those base colors to make my selections because they're going to be too similar in value for that to occur. That's what your selections are for. Your selections are so that I can then do whatever I want to do. You know? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, that, I don't know if that's ever explained clearly enough to people. In books or wherever the fuck they learn this shit. So, <laughs> hmm. Yeah. I'm trying to see if there's anything else I can think about here. So, your flats are fine in terms of, you know, we've gotten past the anti-aliasing thing, you know? Mm -hmm. I just want to make certain, one, you know, that you're just putting it in the right order. Because i got to spend the next hour or two now doing this. And I don't want you to go back and do it. Like, I really don't. I want you to move on with life. But I need this to be, you know, the last time we have this conversation. Now, if gotcha. you have questions about 
what the color reference should be for each character or you know you want to go oh, do you want it like this or that i'm always cool with those kinds of things kick them back what do you think you think it should be like this you think it should be like that i get it that being said you know you got to start seeing every little piece as a part same when you're working with the copics you know and you're coloring characters on a book you know like you got to see each character as like a little 3d thing you know not just it's not a coloring book man you know, right. you're just scribbling across the area and if shit bleeds into one another, you know, so whatever. Anyhow, I've yacked on enough. Brandon, any, anything else? Any final questions? No, you've been pretty clear about it. And I asked what I needed to ask to figure it out. Perfect. All right. So, Brandon, where can people find you and your art on the Internet? Uh, Instagram or Twitter at Lead Heavy. As always, if you guys have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. I'll answer them and I'm going to get back to work later.